So Henry Paulson sends, sends uh, Congress a three-page bill that says, uh, I need $700 billion, no court can review what I do with it, uh, thank you very much. And that was really the just, It was the just trust me legislation for the year. I, I can't understand how Paulson would imagine that he's going to hand Congress this money and they're going to be okay with that. You know, I laugh at that now, but it turns out they were okay with that. Uh, yeah, I think for all intents and purposes. They, they said, we're not going to give you a blank check. And then they put in some, I think what we thought was meager oversight and accountability strings, but yeah. then they gave a blank check. Right. I mean, you know, sure, there's some nominal, there's going to be a special inspector general, there's going to be a congressional oversight panel. But really, Henry Paulson can do whatever he wants with the money. And in fact, he does do whatever he wants with the money. So talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, okay. So, so they, they pass a law, and it's called the Troubled Asset Relief Program, um, ostensibly to buy up these bad assets, these toxic assets right. that is clogging up the system. I don't trust you because you're having these bad uh, assets. I'm not going to loan you money. Nobody wants to loan me money. So, hey, if, if the government takes them off your hands, we're all good. They were actually going to buy the mortgage-backed securities that were kind of the root of the yeah. whole problem. Right? Yeah, and, and then, you know, so at that point, I guess, uh, Henry Paulson sees something else on the horizon. And we don't know what, though. And before he even purchases a single troubled asset, he changes up the game, and it's now called the. He now implements what's called the capital purchase program, in which he basically gives banks money, known as recapitalization. You know, he's it's. I mean, the government does get something in return. We get stock in these banks, and there is real value attached to that. Well, but, particularly if the banks recover and then they start making money, then yeah. the government is a major stockholder. Sure, and and, and, that, and that makes sense to some extent. And a lot of economists were saying, yes, we just need to recapitalize the banks. But it's not entirely clear if this is going to work. And well, it, and it seems like Paulson is kind of feeling around in the dark for the light switch. Right, and, I mean, and well, we I don't... Didn't, I, don't I, I think this is a good idea, and then he's like, no, that's not a good idea, I'm going to change it, even though he's already gotten legislation passed by Congress. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you just look at the history of, of Paulson and his decision-making, really hasn't been batting a thousand. Right, and it's a little it's a little sketchy that he used to work uh, as, a, as a senior executive at Goldman Sachs. Right. I mean, um, you, know, so. you, you know, last year it was, you know, the Bush administration, the fundamentals of the economy are fine. Right. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to bail out Bell Stearns next, we're not going about this, we're, we're okay. Um, so let's go ahead and and uh, give me seven hundred billion dollars. So let's let's talk about going forward. I mean, is this the right structure? And is the right structure in place to make things turn around? Is this all that's going to be necessary? I mean, we're we're talking about way more than even seven hundred billion dollars in TARP. We're talking about uh, seven to eight trillion dollars in investments across the federal government across the country yeah. to try to stimulate the economy and, and save the, the yeah, financial I mean, sector. You, I mean, and, and here's part of the problem in terms from a public interest perspective. And you and me, we don't know where where every place the government is exposed. You have the FDIC that has lending uh, and guarantees between banks. You have the Federal Housing Administration guaranteeing mortgages. There's um, the Federal Reserve. Oh, the Federal Reserve is huge. Right. I mean, they've got lines Plus of credit. Fran Fannie and Freddie Mac Fannie, are involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so you've got potentially, and again, we don't know what exactly this number is. You know, eight. You know, I saw a number, eight and a half trillion dollars. No, Bloomberg has been trying to track yeah. and report that. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 but then you have also people saying, well, that's not quite right. You know, we. There's a lot of details and caveats yeah. in that. Yeah. Number, I mean, right. and then you can dive in, into any of these programs and say, what are these banks doing with the money? Um, you know, where is this money going to? Is it really helping? We don't know. These questions just, you know, still, you know, hanging out there. Let's talk a little bit about Congress's regular work that they're supposed to get done every year. Where are we headed at the end of this year in the switch with administrations and moving to a new Congress? I, you know, I mean, it's it's not surprising that things don't get done when you have a Republican president and a, and a Democratic Congress. I mean, but this year was just abysmal, abysmal for budget making. I mean, let's put aside for a second that, you know, this, this massive these financial bailouts, I mean, now they're talking, you know, $14 billion in loans to the auto industry, you know. And it seems like it's one thing after another. Right. You yeah. know, let's, let's put that aside, these, sure. these one-offs. Uh, war spending, there was a $160 billion war funding bill that got passed. I mean, that was just funding the war. There's other stuff on top of that um, that brought up $250 billion. Right. So well, that's that the expansion of the I mean, GI Bill. I think right, right. positive. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, I mean, there are definitely some good things to be had in here. Um, but going outside of the, the normal budget process, kind of short circuits some of the institutional, you know, um, help 
and, as it and were. budget control mechanisms, uh, oversight, right. really kind of parsing the policy. Hearings and making yeah. sure it just goes through and even slowing it down a little bit, right. you know, I mean, like 700 billion is out the door like that. Right, just in a couple of weeks. Right, I mean, okay, so put that aside. And let's, let's look at the, the regular, normal budget process that's supposed to happen every year. Starts in February with the president handing off the budget. I mean, it seemed like he just kind of changed the dates on his budgets from yeah, 2007. I mean, he did. It, it, yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny if you stack up his, his budget document. I mean, there's a number of volumes, but the budget is one of the slimmest. I think in, in number of pages that he's he's submitted to uh, in his presidency, it's, you know, I mean, he's, he's phoning it in this year, and for good reason. Congress wasn't really able to enact that much on the budget side of stuff, but they really weren't that much better on taxes either. Yeah, what, was, uh, what did they do this year? Well, they did very little. Uh, what they get, got done at the end of the day is they patched a patch to the uh, alternative minimum tax, so they kept 22 million new people from paying the alternative minimum tax, but they didn't pay for it. Yeah. And they also passed a, uh, a package of tax cuts called the extenders, uh, and that's a variety of different tax cuts to individuals and corporations. Um, they also didn't pay for the entirety of that. They paid for part of that. So, I mean, so they get these two tax provisions done, um, and, and presumably they they took all year to get them done. I mean, they, they started working on these things early in the year, and they just now passed them. Right. Actually, with the, um, with the TARP legislation. So what, I mean, what was... What was holding things up? The whole the whole roadblock was about pay fors and whether you're going to offset the cost of the tax cuts or whether you're going to pass them and add the cost on to the deficit. Um, it, it was basically a conflict between House Democratic blue dogs who are more moderate and fiscally responsible and Senate Republicans. And the the blue dogs didn't want to pass anything that wasn't offset, and the Republicans didn't want to pass anything that was offset. Yeah, great. So, exactly. So it was stalemate. Yeah. Uh, what what happened at the end was they decided to go more with Senate Republicans' perspective. The AMT patch is sixty two billion dollars on offset. The extenders is fifty billion about, uh, and half of that was offset. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the way they ended up getting it through the House was they put it on the TARP legislation, right. which everyone said has to pass. You oh my God! Really yeah. That. Um, so it was really more some uh, some legislative uh, gerrymandering than it was really. I agree with this policy. Sure. Yeah.